Check one, two, one. We're gonna stand right here in the center. Just keep it wide. Half body and get some in the, the background a little bit. That always happens, doesn't it? Go right ahead, man, kick it off. Mike and I are here with the wives, and of course we have our vacation hats on. It's my 30th birthday. And we are here all the way in Florence. Not Florence, Italy, although it looks like it. Actually, Florence, Texas. That's right. To be able to experience such an incredible getaway in our own home state. I don't think there's any other place in Texas like this. Tiffany found it to celebrate Josh's birthday. I didn't even know what we yeah. were doing. Thanks for being born, by the way. You're welcome. Appreciate that, man. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Well, I'm looking forward to having some really great dinner, having some fantastic breakfast, going and enjoying the pool, the view, maybe the fitness center today. Uh, we're gonna be out here for a couple days. Just gonna have a good time. Have a fantastic time. What are you wearing on this, uh, on this trip this here? This right here. It's a 228-235 olive dial rose gold day date one of my favorite watches of all time i absolutely am in love with this watch uh, we're selling this one for under fifty thousand. so if you're interested let us know i brought the 126711chnr this is the root beer rolex gmt root beer complete set this one is for sale for 19 five nineteen thousand five hundred dollars what did the wives bring the two tones really look and that's Honestly, oh I know. What this is, is a 15450 two-tone rose gold, arm off the gate, royal oak. 37 millimeter, 37 right? 37 millimeter, that's exactly right. We're selling this for... Zero dollar! <laughs> it's not for sale. Not for sale. <laughs> uh, for the right price, anything really? is for sale. What are, you, what are you wearing? Just a basic watch here, just a real starter piece. It's a 36 <laughs> millimeter black OP. I love it. That's a 126000. I think that this is a classic piece that you just can't go wrong with. Versatile, you can wear it with just about any outfit. Yeah. That's a great choice. It's a great size. It looks almost the same in size. It's, it's incredible. We are headed uh, down to the vineyard in Florence, Texas right now. Josh and Tiffany have been there for the last day. We've got my beautiful wife who's coming with me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Gonna spend the evening uh, down there, have dinner, uh, stay the night. So looking forward to just a great time down there because it's just been a stressful few few weeks, few months at Alpha Crown. Excited to have uh, have some R&R &R with my favorite person in the entire world. Looking forward to some good food and some good views. So. It's dark, can't see a damn thing, but whatever. It's all right. Congratulations. On the drive, making it here alive. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, well, I appreciate it. It feels, uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> this all looks so amazing. Compliments of the chef. Yeah. That's so, that's incredible. Like you must be a watch lover. I knew it was right there. Yes, ma'am. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Years ago. Thank you so much. Is it so good? Suit. Ruben. Wow. Ruben, Ruben, Ruben. Thank oh, fantastic. Oh this Beautiful. is a, our version of the pumpkin pie. Pumpkin oh, pie right there. I see that. This is unbelievable. Thank oh my you. goodness. I can't, I'm speechless. I know. Yeah. Seriously. Happy birthday, dear Josh. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, everyone. The whole dessert menu they brought out. So Keep your spoons good. and then pass it to the left, okay. right? You know that feeling? You're like, I'm so full. Cool. I'm just taking a bite of everything and just sliding it down. Really More? Really? What? Oh, oh my god. god. What is happening? <laughs> oh my god. Come on now, guys. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Let's sing yeah, again. Let's sing again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. For a second time. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you.
Good morning. Well, good morning from the vineyard. Cheers. It's a beautiful morning out here. The, the weather is nice and cool. The birds are singing and chirping. Cattle are lowing. The brook behind the, the spot here is bubbling. Yeah, you're really meant to feel like you are in the Italian countryside. And it's pretty convincing. Other than the U-Haul truck that's uh, coming down the road. <laughs> Other than that, it's pretty dang convincing. The vineyard there, and then I think the main house is just up the up the hill. We got a nice brunch ahead of us this morning, but let me talk about just last night. Oh my word. Chef Ruben, who's from Venezuela, grew up in Spain, uh, and then studied under Anthony Bourdain, which I learned last night. He knocked it out of the park. Every single dish was amazing. Uh, they brought out complimentary appetizers. No. A few entrees, right? No, not entrees. Uh, sides. Complimentary and sides. Desserts. And then we were looking at the dessert, asked about the dessert menu, and the our server was, you know, had memorized dessert menu for the day because it changes every day. Apparently, it's just whatever the chef feels like making. She was like trying to read off or trying to remember all the things, and literally as she's saying that, like they just come out and they bring out a, a plate of every single. There was like eight different desserts that they brought out. It was just a great time. We had a fantastic time. It was, they were. So so accommodating and I, I look forward to breakfast and look forward to walking the grounds a little bit. I'm Haley. I'm Mike's wife. Oh boy, here we go. Here's the inside scoop that everybody wants. Um, what is it actually like to be married to Mike, the co-owner of Alpha Crown? It's pretty damn good. <laughs> it's so pretty out here, seriously. Smells great. I love it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Morning. Perfect. Okay, I'll set across from you. I'm gonna get uh, drip coffee with just a little bit of milk. I'm gonna take the same as him. Please. Um, regarding the property that you guys were interested in potentially purchasing for 1.5, that was on a ground lease. It's not recommended that you do that for that specific space because what you're basically doing, you're buying the income of the building. You're not buying like the actual building. You will be the landlord of the building. So in a sense you are buying, but ultimately you're not because- you're just buying the cash flow. Yeah, exactly. You own the building, but you don't own the land that the right. building is on. Exactly, so because then you don't actually own real, real estate. estate is built on the land. Whatever's affixed to the land is the real estate. We can inquire more about it and ask if it's a fee simple. So what a fee simple would be is the building and the income. I don't think that's the case in this scenario because he was saying that they were selling it quietly. I'm not interested in Yeah, I want to yeah. own the building. Yeah. yeah. I want to own the real estate. Right. Thank you. There's a bunch of red flags. Yeah, that, that restaurants have the highest turnover. Yeah, you know, they fail the most. If somebody wanted to come in that wasn't a restaurant and you wanted to entertain the idea, you would have to give them, you know, TI amount right, to, to rip lot. out the kitchen and all that. Plus, there's only one other tenant. So you'd only have two tenants for an 11,000 square foot building. That's yeah. just not much. So mm -hmm. if, no if we want to invest in like, land or a building, let's look someplace else or at something different, you know? This is your passion fruit. Oh, wonderful. Your mango. Mm -hmm. And then your orange here. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. We are on vacation, so we got some Prosecco. Yes. Uh, and we're going to be enjoying that with, I guess, different yeah, variety of juices. I guess we're going to make it, make our own like we're a bunch of hobos. <laughs> I was like, no, not champagne. <laughs> How do we have known that everything... Keep your thumb on there. Right. And okay. go point that way. Woo! I'll shake it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. What juice would you like, baby? Yeah, mango. I would also like to try some mango. Ooh, Did I want some or a lot? <laughs> I mean, I think there's a lot of that. I know, it's bubbles. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's good. I know that you guys are interested in an industrial space or one that looks 
like it, we can look at options, like the property subtype is industrial. We can look at places like that mm -hmm. if you want. And so what I would do is I would just pitch to the, the broker that you guys are having more of what's called a showroom and that you would have like an appointment based only. It would not technically be retail. Mm -hmm. So we can look at that option if you would like. Truthfully, when we're moving locations and the, the new location we're looking at, because our goal is that, hey, let's have, a, let's have an industrial space, maybe in a warehouse off the beaten path that's kind of hidden but that's probably not the right move first no right now because the first move is like we need to get out there we need brand recognition yeah. we need to build client base we need to get we need to get the name alpha crown be synonymous with watches in that area i think we need to primarily focus in on a retail space but we don't have to have retail hours it could be appointment only or or we could be open you know at certain set times i think if we manage to do that that'll work even if the primary clientele is like oh well we're surrounded by this retail space and that retail space brand awareness. I had the same thought. Um, I know that you guys had mentioned or just we're looking at all your options and looking at office space. I just didn't oh, necessarily think or believe that that was the best yeah, thing I'll to just, do yeah, we'll, because we'll kind of... I just think, yeah, being exposed, the more exposure, the better, sure especially if y'all are going to be the first pre-owned luxury watch you store. You have an update on, there was a retail space that had a men's clothing store mm -hmm. at the shops. Is that still certain like they're moving out in December? Yes, they are moving out in December. However, I have not checked to see if the spot's still available. Okay, because that, it's like a, it's like a shootout. Huh? Thank you. Someone, someone needs to film Josh. Tiffany, you gotta film Josh. This is stupid. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Where's uh. Miguel when you need him? <laughs> well, Miguel is... Uh, at, at a his, bachelor party. His brothers. No, I did. I told Other him, brothers. I told him, I said, hey, it's family. Family comes first. We'll, we'll make you. That space was was already outfitted mm -hmm. to where it's like, we could make that work pretty quickly. Pretty fast. You think so? Yeah. I didn't go inside. New, I just like, oh. Yeah, it already had yeah. a bar. Oh, that's are you cool. serious? Yeah, like that was a register, the bar, everything like that. It was very cool. It wasn't a bar. Yeah, there was a, yeah. Oh, well, really? we yeah, can go like see it again. There. a small bar there. And you could add accent lighting and things like that. And then yeah. the front half of the space is retail and the back half is offices and storage and shipping. And I'm like, it really is like a perfect setup. Yeah. Hmm. I feel you know, like for studio. I feel like for security purposes too, it like yeah makes me nervous to think about y'all being like out somewhere like you know, it's just different. Yeah, it's there is no foot traffic, yeah. right? There is, there is nothing, so. I feel yeah. like if you, if, if in a high traffic area, those grounds I think have security on site that, that mm. monitor. Next to what were your Re thoughts? My thoughts about that space are that it's a complete finish up and we'd have to work with a designer, we'd have to work, we'd have to pull permits with the city, get all that approved. So one of the issues uh, Tiffany was talking with one of the seasoned realtors and they were just commercial. like, com yeah, yeah. seasoned commercial realtors and subleasing is a nightmare. It almost never works. That's what I was going to talk about next. As of like a few days ago, one year left on our lease. You'll when you have a year left on that lease in Dallas? Mm -hmm. What's it going to cost to break it? You leave and you keep paying until someone fills it. Yeah. So you could talk to that's your cool. your landlord. Hey, can you remember to broker a deal? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. We, we spent $30,000 renovating this space. It looks so much better than it did. Yeah. Like, you should be able to find a tenant. And we, 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 well, we experienced it, a trauma here. Put it on the market. We can't stay. Have her start advertising it, make a deal, ask like, hey, if, if you can get tenant in here before our lease is up, will you absolve us of our, of our contract? Yeah, we need to have a meeting. Well, no, no, they will. Okay. I just, I think it's arguable that, that we should be able to break that lease because of, because of what happened. It's not really ideal to sublease whenever you only have 18, 12 months left. Uh, you've got to find a tenant that's suitable for the space that you guys approve of and not only you but Shamika or, or your your landlord and then no. you're still ultimately responsible oh, for the rent your tenant right doesn't pay so just a lot of liability there it's not ideal we can write up lois for whatever spaces you guys are interested in can negotiate from there and but i think the first thing i'll need to tackle is is talking to your landlord to get that place leased out. So you're gonna get roughly 15 to $20 a square foot for renovations for you guys. So if you rent a place that's 2,000 square feet, let's just say it's 18 to meet in the middle, you're gonna get about $36,000. From the? From the landlord. landlord. 
to renovate your space wherever you want. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, damn, so we you're make that happen because we have contacts. Yeah. yeah. And we the other work ourselves, you know, be a general contractors on it. It's the landlord that's putting like he's investing in his own in his own right? property. Own so so you're going to have to upfront it all and then keep the receipts. You have to pull permits. A landlord is going to want an actual contractor to do it and they're going to want to see that you already paid the contractor when you turn in your receipts because they don't want to have any kind of mechanic lien on their property if you guys hired a carpenter sure. and you didn't pay him. You know what I'm saying? So Daniel Flores, who's doing the rental, he did the flooring for the rental property. They're gonna do the trim. They grow serve as our serve as our contract. They could they could they could do it. It's, they're very professional and capable. I think we could talk with them and work out a deal like, hey, we're doing a massive outfitting. It'll be a huge job for them. Dragon Street was never a permanent thing. No, y'all no. always said that. It was a stepping stone. That... Three years and then we're gonna move. Exactly. Fortunately, y'all have already had that mindset. You just gotta continue to have that mindset. We need to pick a spot, start negotiating. So whatever spot you pick, it's gonna take 60 to 90 days to get it outfitted to how you guys want it. So you're gonna need a spot to stay for three, two to three months. We just need to talk more about the timeline of everything and make sure that it can go as smoothly as possible. Florentine? Uh, yes, that's mine. Omelette with uh, hot sauce and shishuka sauce? Yes, please. Thank you. Beautiful. It's incredible looking. Amazing. Hello, Hello again. Hello. Oh, oh wow. wow. I love this man. I know. <laughs> right? This is our farmer's garden bread. Oh. our marinara. And then our olive oil is infused with our spices from our garden. Oh, that olive oil looks so good. Yes, that's right here. Thank you so much. Lord, thank you so much for this gathering, uh, just for family. Uh, God, we appreciate you and um, everything and all the blessings that you've done in, in our lives and in our lives. Uh, Father, we just thank you for all of that, Lord. Uh, bless this food, bless it through our bodies. Uh, pray this in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Oh this is our French toast. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. That look, what's on top? Pumpkin butter. Oh, it looks oh so good. Mozzarella calzone. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> they were just talking about how I uh, put on this many pounds in the last you know, couple months, you know. Um, Calories are I do true. not believe that at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that you've added any pounds. Okay, but yes, mm. enjoy. Thank you so much. Chef! Hi, <laughs> how are you? Man, what are you doing to us? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. This is amazing. Theme. Tell us about this calzone right yeah, here. Yeah, calzone. Oh, prosciutto, oh, mozzarella, oh, tomato, basil. Yes. Our version, the French, the French toast. French toast. French toast. Seasonal French toast. And then it's got butter pu pumpkin. Butter pumpkin. Uh, yeah. Caramel sauce. The the mix in the French toast. Mm -hmm. Our pumpkin spices. Okay. Oh. Really, really nice. A little bit of the orange. Uh huh. Oh, very nice. Yeah. For this weather, that sounds incredible. Yes. Yeah, our farmer's bread. Mm. Yeah, so good. We walked through the herb garden this morning. Enjoyed seeing everything that was growing. Absolutely incredible. We're going to have a hard time finishing this food. Yes. We're going to give it a shot. But we're going to try. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Incredible. Guys, look at this table. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Bread pudding. Ooh, I love bread pudding. This is our cinnamon roll. Flourless chocolate cake. Oh my gosh. Today what we saw, what we tasted, what we had, I've never had any any other breakfast or brunch that has topped it in presentation, quality of ingredients, taste. You have to come and experience what we've experienced. It's worth every bit of time and every bit of money. We're gonna go check out the pool, maybe get a quick workout in, enjoy some poolside relaxation. So let's get over there. Thank you guys for coming out, being here. It honestly means a lot. Nobody and asked you to make this <laughs> In all seriousness, it does mean a lot. And I love that you guys are here. It's awesome. Absolutely. We're glad to be here, man. I wish that we could have come down Thursday. What'd you say? <laughs> so we love hanging out with Tiffany. <laughs> yeah, Tiffany is a great, she's the greatest. And love you. I love you. Aw, Tiffany, you're the best wife. Okay, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, you know, again, I just want, you know, consistent communication so that we can uh, you know, just keep things going and, and keep the progress going. So, okay. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. We had the 
the Pave Yacht Master, we sent it off to get serviced. It was at our watchmaker when we got robbed. And so it didn't get taken, obviously. It's a very particular piece, Pave dials. You just don't, don't see a lot of people wearing them. So it's, it's unique and it takes the right kind of buyer. The guy that consigned it, we kept kind of dropping the price, you know, $500 or whatever. And he was getting to the end of his contract where he's just like, man, he's like, what else can we do? And we were like, well, why don't we try this? Why don't we craft an email and let's offer an exclusive price for a limited like window of time, like 48 hours, 72 hours or whatever. So he dropped the price, like another two or three grand. His original asking price was 45. He's like, dude, it's 39,995. And we're like, all right, let's do it. Sent that email out, 36 hours later, guy contacts us and he's like, I want it. And he's trading in his, his Panda Daytona. You know, you send an email out to 1,500 people, you expect, you know, someone to, to buy it at it, and, and they did. We had other people ask about it, but that, that guy was like, I want it, I'll, I'll, I'll trade a watch in. He was the first one to reach out. We had multiple reach out. He was, he was the, first. the first to reach out. It's a win-win-win. So it's a win for us because we're gonna make our margin. And it's a win for the consigner because they really wanna move the piece at a fair price. Yeah. You know, they do. It is a win for the buyer because the buyer is getting it for, for a good price. Mm -hmm. The consigner's happy, the buyer's happy. We're gonna make our percentages off of that. We, we yeah. told them like, look, even though it, we're dropping it below 40, and that should technically take it into a higher percentage, you know, consignment margin, mm -hmm. that will honor the the, uh, the percentage fee of what it would have been. So that's what, is it 5% or 6%? 5%, yeah, it would be 6%. Between 40 and 60 is five? Five, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's that's practically two, 2,000. About $2,000, about 5%, so. He's trading in a 2018 full set uh, Panda Daytona Rolex. So we'll get two pandas in at the same time because there's another one that we bought. Yeah, that's yeah, literally practically the same time. Like we're talking one of the hardest Daytonas to get your hands on from Rolex. We have brokered. This will be like five. Brokered, bought, sold. Brokered, bought. So yeah, yeah brokered, multiple. bought, sold, multiple. This is like five in like 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. So and then a couple of, of other more updates. Uh, we had sold a two-tone Datejust black dial. Um, we only made $500 on that deal, but honestly, we brought it in and I, and I paid a little strong on it. I paid $13,500 and we ended up selling it for fourteen. dollars So, or excuse me, $13,000. We ended up selling it for thirteen five. dollars I did offload it to a dealer. I didn't feel very strong on that piece and I just, I didn't have any clients that were particularly interested. Then we had another client reach out uh, and then we did a source uh, watch for him. Now, what that means is he, he reaches out and said, hey, do you have a Santos all black ADLC in stock? And I said, no, I don't have that. I've got a couple Santoses here and there that I do have or I have coming in, uh, but he, this, he wanted this one very specifically. So I went into the dealer chats and I put a call out and I had someone respond to me and they said, look, I've got a 2021 mint condition in stock and I got it for 6,300. I called him up. I said, I was looking at some prices online. I was seeing them go for about 75, 76. I said, dude, I can get this to you for 7,000. 250 he brought me down to 7150 i said no big deal um and so we closed at 7150 uh, and then i was able to actually close at 6200 with the dealer so we made 950 dollars um, obviously we have to pay for shipping and all of that but you know at the end of the day it's it's just under a thousand dollar profit there um and that's a huge profit for uh i mean that's that's over i mean that, yeah that's well over i mean that's like 15 17 percent if my mouth is right i'm really happy with that uh, the margins for the lower end watches, you do want to tend to aim for more than 10%. Um, I always try to aim for 15 plus. And so if I can, uh, if I can get that margin, I'm very, very happy. I'm not going to be unhappy if I can't, but you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. And, and then there was one last thing and, and we got all this, uh, in, in the next, it was just a, in a, a span of just a couple of days. We then also sold a 18038 blue dial. And that was a, uh, a 1987 and I know that from the serial number, it was naked, but from the serial number, uh, we sold that for 12,500, I think, uh, which honestly is a little under where it should have been. But this was a client that had really been wanting one. He'd been looking for one for a long time. He was buying this as a gift. It was his, uh, it was, it was the, the 18038. For those of you who don't know, that's a, that, that is a vintage, older, day date, 36 millimeter classic. This one had a blue dial. And uh, he actually wanted to swap the dial. Keep the original, but swap it for an aftermarket, something with diamonds and all that, so. Look at this view, my gosh, holy cow. We are at the pool right now. The view is spectacular. They're gonna take us over to the winery and they're gonna, they're gonna treat us a little bit and allow us to take some flights and do some wine tasting uh, in, the, in the winery. So I'm excited about that, it'll be nice. I always enjoy uh, tasting some good wine and see what they have here. So you 
start with the, the lightest oh, and then you work your way to the darkest. Turn off. Because if we <laughs> stop. Josh looks like an old man. Time to go home. Time to go home. Oh, we had such a good time. Yeah, it was so great, you guys. Oh. Don't worry about that. I haven't been this close to you guys in a long time. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> Do you not hug Josh like all the time? Only when he's crying. It's only like once a week. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye, Vineyard. Anyway, you guys, you guys have it out now, or are you guys gonna stay? No, we're headed out. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's drive together. We'll get out. We got out of town here. Let's get out of town. Let's race.